God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, actually, God said it, that settles it, whether you believe it or not. You see what I'm saying? But we want to be those that believe it. Not one of those that fight against the will of God because no one ever wins. And we want to be on his side. So tonight, for a few minutes, uh, a short sermon tonight after the brutal one this morning. I don't apologize for any of it. Strong people need strong meat. Amen. Well, there's a time and a place for everything. I want to talk tonight about who's speaking in the Word. Because all Scripture contains true statements, but may not apply to us. And a lot of times, God is not the one speaking. So we can't form a doctrine on Satan's words and sentences. and You get in the picture here. So we need to learn how to write the divide the Word of God so we will know who's speaking in the Scripture and to whom. Does it apply for them, us, future, past, present, or what? And this takes time to understand these things, and we're all still learning how to write the divide the Word, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, so forth and so on. But... Um, God always says something first, and then he sees something second. For example, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Isn't that simple? And verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Okay. So everything that God does... He thinks about it in his mind, then he speaks, and then he sees what he spoke. That's the way God created everything that is. Now, we can't do that. The only thing we create is a mess. Now, why is there a glitch there? Not a one of us here are God tonight. There is an exception to the rule. If you're a prophet and you speak with the divine unction, you can set things in motion for people, but God still does the creating. He shifts things around because somebody spoke the mind of the Spirit in this earth. That is the exception. But you babes in the Lord, don't try it. It won't work. Now, let's look at Mark chapter 1 and verse 11. So, who is speaking? Mark chapter 1 and verse 11. <clears throat> this one's easy to understand. There came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay, now, now who's speaking there? Well, God the Father. Let's be specific now. God the Father, because they're the one that Jesus' only cult says that, see, there I am getting abrasive again. Well, that's the way it is. Jesus is not the Father or the Spirit. Jesus is not a ventriloquist. He's not in the deceptive mode. The Father God spoke from heaven and said, this is myself. No. No. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes. A voice from heaven came. Now, folks, we can read, can we not? Huh? So who's speaking? The Father God's speaking. And we have the account, the actual, factual, true account in the Scriptures that God the Father spoke, just like he did when he said, light be. Now, I don't know which one for sure in the Godhead said that. I assume the Word said that. But for the sake of argument, we'll just say, Elohim said it. All right. Amen. Now, so when you do understand 2 Timothy 2.15, and I quoted that a while ago, 
uh, we need to do this so we can understand how to rightly divide God's Word and apply it to our lives so that we can be blessed. Amen. And believe the truth. Study to show yourself approved unto God that workmen need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Everybody say rightly dividing. So there is a division. This Scripture fits here. That Scripture fits there. And the pollen is thick today. <laughs> we need to learn how. The only way we can rightly divide the word is to understand dispensations. Yes, there's covenants, but then if we don't understand dispensationalism, we cannot rightly divide the word. This scripture goes there. The scripture goes here. That scripture is the law. The scripture is grace. That scripture is future prophecy. Uh, that's future eternity. That's past eternity. This is time. And you can only understand that by understanding dispensationalism. And so we are premillennial dispensationalists here at Zion Word Church. Amen. Because it's the right way to divide the word. Now, the word is like hand in a glove, it'll fit like this. But scriptures out of text does not fit the rest of the canon of scripture. And you've got to have two or three scriptures to, to form any type of teaching, any type of doctrine that'll hold water with God. So we don't want to change the word, add to, take away. We just simply want to know what God has revealed to us in the scripture and then rightly apply it so we won't be deceived. Amen. So we will not be deceived. Because Satan loves to twist the word and deceive God's people. So let's go look at John chapter 8 now in verse 44. So I'm talking about, thank you, hon. I'm talking about who's speaking in the Bible. Everybody look back that way right quick. It annoys me when these hotshot preachers take a drink on TV and you can hear them swallowing. I don't like that. That's not edifying to me. So, you know, I, but <clears throat> we're in the body and the pollen is thick. I'm telling you, it's about that thick on the pickup. And so we'll try to be dignified tonight. All right. John 8, 44. Look at this now. Uh, you are the, your father, the devil. Of course, now who's speaking to, the, to these people? Jesus is. All right. You're the father, your father, the devil, the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Abode not in the truth, because the truth is not in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So I'm not going to believe anything Satan says. Zilch, he's wasting his time. Now he'll take some truth, see. And then twist it just enough to deceive you anyway. So we've got to know sound doctrine. As I've been teaching the Africans, hopefully, sound doctrine puts a wall up and keeps the devil out. We don't let the walls fall down, no. You cannot let the walls fall down for some superficial unity. Unity revolves around the cross, the gospel, and rather the dividing the word of God. If we can agree on walking with God and His Word, we can have fellowship. But I can't have fellowship that deny Christ and, and you know, they claim to be Christians, but they deny. The, now, here's a good one. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call a name. I won't. There was a Baptist pastor, big time, that died here a while back, 90 years old. His son took over, and now they're accepting the gays. So you see, or you see, God loves these people, even the gays, but I cannot walk with a preacher that preaches that stuff. Right. So there's a division, and I'm the troublemaker. You're the troublemaker. Well, Jesus was a troublemaker, if you want to put it that way. So was Paul. So we're in pretty good company, are we not? We're in pretty good company. I mean, there's always hope for repentance, and, but then we've got to hold the plumb line here. Amen. Well, Jesus told him up front, your father is the devil. 
And uh, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 now in verse 14 and 15. So this is a short message tonight, and everybody's glad about that, right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and the Lord God said, there he is speaking again, to the serpent. Now, when I talk to snakes, he's going to be a dead one. Mm -hmm. Now, this serpent, of course, was what well, the Bible says. Uh, but when you read this account, he was the most beautiful creature that God ever made. Uh-huh. Because you have done this, thou art cursed. Now, this is God speaking to the serpent. And many theologians that lost their mind have said this was a snake. Well, if it was a snake, it was standing up right on his feet and speaking. Yeah. Not the kind of snake we're thinking about. And off the record here, I'm kind of wondering if Satan wasn't the serpent himself. Because, you know, if a, a fallen angel can transfigure himself into an angel of light, don't you think Satan could do that? Now, let's look at this. God is saying to the serpent, because... Thou have, you have done this. Now, who did it? The serpent or Satan? Thou art cursed above all cattle and above the beasts of the field. Upon the belly thou shalt go in the dust. Thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. Okay, I can understand that. Uh, the serpent losing his uh, uh, legs and everything and having to crawl and eat dust. I can understand that. But look at the next verse. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now, a snake doesn't have these qualities. So now, God is talking to not the snake or the serpent, but Satan. He said, I will, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And so, God is speaking to Satan, not the serpent. Now, it could be a synonymous thing here, and I'm, I'm beginning to think maybe Satan was the serpent. Because how can a fallen angel possess anything? Would somebody answer that for me? Unclean spirits and demons is what possess living beings. Satan is a being, a fallen angel, and has some type of body, and therefore, how could he literally indwell a person? or even a snake or an animal. When the guy had legion, uh, some 2,000 to 6,000 demons were demons, not Satan, were cast out of that guy. They went into the hog, and the hogs committed suicide. You know the account. Well, that wasn't fallen angels. That was demons. Even when Judas was possessed, he was possessed by a demon, not the being of Satan. Bible may say Satan, but here's the thing. When we're speaking of a demonic, uh, the dark side, ooh, the dark side, it's all the same. They're all evil. Well, so God is speaking to Satan. The curse was on the serpent and Satan. And perhaps I'm repeating maybe one and the same. All right, now, do with it what you will. Uh, Joshua chapter 6 now, please, and verse 16 and 17. So I'm trying to swim around who's speaking in the Scripture. Of course, this is endless. It came to pass at the seventh time when the priest... Wait a minute, where am I at here? Yeah, okay. When the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city shall be cursed, even it, and all that are therein, and the Lord, and the Lord, excuse me, let me start over. And the city shall be cursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. 
Now, I know I'm going to upset some folks. God did not say Rahab was a harlot. And we've heard our whole life, oh, Rahab the harlot. God never said she was a harlot. Men said it. So we've got to understand who's talking, and is it accurate or is it not? So if I've ever called Rahab a harlot, I repent, because frankly, we don't know. God never said it, and anybody else's vocabulary is not 100% accurate. Can I move on, please? Do with it what you want. Amen. Now, in the book of Job, and I know uh, Brother Heath loves this book. Uh, about every Monday, he sends me something about it. <laughs> Job chapter 1 and verse 7 to 10. So who's speaking? Did God say Rehab was a harlot? Answer. Someone else did. They called her a harlot. Can I move on, please? You know, assuming something, you know what that does? That makes you know what out of you and not me. Job chapter 1, verse 7. And the Lord said to Satan, okay, we got that, all right. Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. Here we have the account. From going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down in it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and shewed evil? Now, God's speaking there. That's true. That's true. Then Satan, now Satan's a liar. Is everybody listening to me? And Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for naught? That's smart, Ellie. And then here comes Satan. Now, Satan's talking in verse 10. Now, follow this now. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Well, some of that could be true. But God never said there was a Job around us. There was a hedge around Job. God never said that. So who's talking here? Can we believe him? <laughs> Hold that hedge. And I think Brother Monty's right on this. I mean, to me, you ever see a, a mule that plowed a, a garden? They've got the blinders on, especially in Arkansas, the blinders, you know. You know what G means, Melissa? Ha. Not he ha. G ha. Left, right. Whoa, giddy up. I've watched Grandpappy plow the garden. But these blinders, you see. Now, we're the same. God's hedged us, okay? We're garrisoned about with a great cloud of witnesses. Angels all around protecting us. They encampeth around about the saints and deliver them, all right? That's one thing. But God promises to keep us on the straight and narrow. If we go too far... You know what? There's like a wall there, and then we go back over here, and there's a wall over here. And so God is pretty much keeping us where we're supposed to be going. Like a mule. Never mind. It's only conjecture. But uh, God did not say there was a hedge around Job. Satan did. Now, was there a hedge? Really, I don't care. I'm just, my, my, my statement is who's talking? That's all I want to get across tonight. Who's talking? Not going to send theological debate with you theologians. I just wanted you to understand who's talking to whom. That's all I'm on tonight. That's it. Amen. Can you accept that? That's all I want to talk about. Amen. Now, Heath can figure this out. You let me know when you get it figured out, all right? You and Monty, you figure it out, and then you let me know and keep me straight. Hedged in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Now look at this. Everybody say, I want to know who's talking here. 
All right. Hello. I want to know who's talking here. In the Bible, not me, in the Bible. Okay. We had the accurate record. A miracle. It truly is God's Word. Matthew 7, verse 22 and 23. Now, here's something that the church has been fooled for 40 years that I know about. Many will say to me in that day, now who's going to speak to the Lord? Many. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then, this is Jesus talking, I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you that work iniquity. Now, here's the point. Jesus never said they were casting out devils. Jesus never said that did many wonderful works. They said it. That's the reason Jesus said, I don't even know you. Where we get the idea that these guys were actually doing this stuff? It's religion, folks. We've got to get it out. If we try to read into the Scriptures, that's dangerous. Don't do that. Just take it at face value and let God be God. Can we do that much? I know this much. Jesus said he didn't know them, so therefore they were lying about it. The Bible doesn't say they cast out demons. The Bible doesn't say that they did many wonderful works. The Bible doesn't say they prophesied. They said it. But we have the record of what they said, according to Jesus. Now, this is going to save us a lot of heartaches on down the road. If we'll just stop and think a minute, instead of skimming over the Scripture trying to get to the Bible, there's no hurry. We need to stop and think about it. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to give us insight and illumination, even revelation of God's Word so we will learn how to overcome and walk in the Word, being led of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God does not lead us when we're walking in a lie or an error. No, He can't. But when we're walking in the truth of God's Word, He will. He always does. So we'll let the brilliant preachers figure that one out. Now let's look at Mark chapter 16 and verse 9. And someone said, well, you're a smart aleck. I know it. <laughs> Mark chapter 16, verse 9. Well, I've been called worse than a smart aleck. It doesn't matter. I like that song of Phil Collins. I don't care anymore. You hear me? I don't care. I played it for my wife today, and she didn't think it was very funny, but I thought it was kind of funny. Because the fact is, a lot of this nonsense that people get into, I really don't care. Paul said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. That isn't my problem. My problem is to present the truth the best that we can do with the help of the Holy Spirit. And now you decide. You got a Bible. Holy Spirit's your teacher. How does you do that? <laughs> Mark 16, verse 19. Hey, and believe it or not, everybody, this is the last verse. Can you believe that? I think I'll drink to that. This is the last verse. <laughs> you know, we got some honey at the house, it's real honey, but it looks like it's in a pint of whiskey bottle, you know, and I'm thinking, honey, I'm thinking, Trivi, honey. Would you get, put it on Facebook and let me turn the label around so, you know, people think I'm drinking whiskey, you know. Get people talking. Well, a little wine for some sake, you know what I'm saying? Mark 16 and verse 9. Now, don't run off and say the preacher said I can start drinking. No. I know you don't drink anymore. I know that. But you don't drink any less. Like these people, well, I'm, I'm cutting back. <laughs> Especially smoking, I'm cutting back. <laughs> I'm, cut, I'm cutting back. <laughs> oh. 
All right, now here's another one. You're going to get upset at me. Mark 16 and verse 9. And when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, that harlot. See what that says? Nowhere in the Bible does, is Mary Magdalene called a harlot. It says, out of whom he had cast out seven devils. That's what the Word of God says. Now, she may have been in the harlotry. I don't know. It's none of my business. I'm not going to read into the Scripture and try to prove she's a harlot. Because the Bible doesn't say it. Well, who said it? Some ignoramus that thought he knew theology. We pick up on the nonsense, and then we, we preach that kind of stuff, and then one of the churches in a mess. The Bible does not say Mary was a harlot. So in closing here then, we have different entities speaking in the Bible. First off, we have God the Father. Go amen or mm, I don't care. God the Father, the Lord Jesus, no, you're not playing right. Call and response time. First, we have God the Father. Amen. Then we have God the Son. Amen. Then we have Holy Spirit speaking. Amen. And then we have angels speaking. Amen. Then we have good and corrupt angels speaking. We have believers speaking. We have prophets speaking. We have kings speaking. Good and bad kings speaking. We have demons speaking. And we have Satan speaking. On and on and on we can go. The fact is we have the record and all we got to do is figure out who's speaking to who and apply that which is applicable to our lives and we will make heaven our home. That's it tonight. Can you stand up and give God a praise? Just a little praise. He'll take it from us tonight. Amen. He has spoken to us the true word of God, and we have it. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. We love you, Lord. We give you the glory for loving us enough to give us the truth of your word, Father. And we thank you that it will keep us till the day of redemption. Praise God. Help us to have the gift to discern the spirits, to understand who is speaking in the Word and who is speaking to us as we go through life's journey. And we thank you and give you praise in advance in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen and hallelujah.